Tonight, our Dr. Frank McGeorge is tackling the topics of masks and boosters, but he starts us off with a question on testing, Doc. Jason, so Chuck asks, I have a stuffy nose, cough, and sore throat, tested three times over a week negative. Is something going around other than COVID? I'm staying home and getting better slowly. Well, Chuck, it's great that you've both tested negative for COVID and have been staying home. Frankly, COVID or not, it's winter in Michigan, and lots of people also have just run-of-the-mill upper respiratory viruses as well. Now, here are some more of your questions. A viewer asks, if someone has facial hair and wants to continue to have his facial hair, just how effective is it to wear these masks and what should we do? This is an important point now that many people are using better N95, KN95, or KF94 masks. First off, when it comes to regular masks, studies show that having facial hair doesn't really make much of a difference since they generally don't have a perfect seal around the face to start with. However, when it comes to N95, KN95, or KF94 masks, the seal they form around the face is critical to their performance, and facial hair definitely impacts their effectiveness. A study from the Journal of Exposure Science and Environmental Epidemiology specifically found that the type of high filtration mask and the beard length made a difference. Because N95 masks use straps behind the head, they can still pull a mask more tightly against a bearded face and were more effective than KN95 and KF94 masks that use ear loops, especially as the beard length increased. Now you should note that in this study, even with a beard length of 10 millimeters, the filtration was still better than using an ordinary mask. It just wasn't as good as it would have been without facial hair. Based on this study, trimming your beard so it isn't as thick appears to help. The shape of your beard can also make a difference. This CDC infographic shows beard styles that do provide a better seal. Now finally, a viewer named Patricia asks, I haven't heard any information on how long the booster works, when does it start to wane, and so on. It's already been almost four months since I received my booster. Well, Patricia, data recently released from the UK actually found by about three months, the booster only reduced the risk of symptomatic infection by about 50%. However, and this is the crucial part, the booster provided about 80% protection against hospitalization even after four months. Back to you. Okay, Dr. McGeorge, thank you.